Live from the News Hub at Adesawa in Kanda, Accra, this is News at 10 on TV3 and we're also live on our DSTV channel 279. My name is Grace Hamwa Asari. Send us your views and comments on our various social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter as TV3 Ghana. First, let's take a news at the news highlights. Ghana has moved up from grade D in 2016 to A in the micro fiscal forecasting of the public financial management system implementation. At the launch of the 2018 Public Expenditure and Financial Accountability Report, Dr. Mohamed Sani Abdullah noted the Public Expenditure and Financial Accountability Assessment Report provides the opportunity to identify gaps and close them. Also, parents of children with Ebb's palsy have been encouraged to seek early treatment as that is key to total recovery. Most parents shy away from professional intervention, causing more damage to their children. Residents of Mantuari in the Doma Central Municipality of the Bono region struggle to access health care, construction of a community-based health planning and services compound chips has been abandoned. On International France, the 2019 edition of Media Generals Ghana's Most Beautiful has been launched in the Ashanti Regional Capital of Kumasi. The most watched reality pageant show in the country will see 16 contestants competing for a coveted crown for 2019 tagged Black and Proud. That's on the entertainment front. The World Health Organization said it has vaccinated over 1,300 people who potentially came into contact with the Ebola virus in the Congolese city of Goma, helping contain what many feared would be a rapid spread in an urban center. A year-long Ebola outbreak in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo has killed at least 1,800, the second biggest toll ever. Goma, a lakeside city of nearly 2 million people on the Rwandan border, has been on high alert over the past week after a gold miner with a large family contaminated several people before dying himself. No new confirmed cases had been reported in Goma since the WHO's previous report on August 2. So those were the stories that trended in the day. Let's go to some other stories now. Residents of Ada Kase Junction in the Ada East District of the Greater Accra Region Sunday blocked the main road on the Tema Aflau Highway, trying to protest against authorities for failing to construct speed ramps at the junction. According to Assemblyman for the area, Simon Arthur, several people have been maimed and some killed as a result of speeding vehicles which ply the stretch sometimes knocking down pedestrians. Last month, the residents recorded five casualties. On Friday, two persons were also knocked down by speeding vehicles. This infuriated the youth to construct their own speed ramps. The residents say several petitions have been forwarded to the Ada East District Assembly, but the Assembly has failed to heed their call. The youth started constructing the ramps, but were stopped by the police. The youth then blocked the road and burned car ties. Still on this story, the Adan Divisional Police Commander Chief Superintendent George Kuma has confirmed no one has been arrested in spite of the disorderly conduct of some residents in the area. He spoke earlier on News 360. 
Uh, at the moment, uh, no arrests have been made, but we have identified the key leaders so who led the youth to do that, and at appropriate time, we are going for this. But I think uh, on your screen, you are watching it yourself, burning ties on the road, constructing unauthorized road speed checks, which are not authorized by the authority. Mm, but are you aware of the reasons why they are constructing their own speed ramps? Oh, yes, we are aware. We are aware. Uh, the DICEC has taken steps uh, to handle the issue, which the highway authorities have been even informed. And we are waiting for the appropriate uh, construction mm. of the speed ramps. We are very much aware of it. This is not the first time uh, this thing is happening. Uh, it happened some months uh, back. We they constructed the same uh, on on unauthorized uh, speed uh, ramps. We invited the authority. We sat down with them. We told them how to go about it, which they wrote, and even copied the police. The appropriate uh, authority is very much aware, and they are taking steps to come and reconstruct the approved speed uh, checks. And I instead of you taking their time for that thing to be done, you know, it's a process. So we are all waiting uh, patiently for the process to be, I mean, followed. And uh, all of a sudden, this morning, they started burning ties, uh, constructing on authorizers to speed uh, checks. Uh, at the moment, we haven't arrested anybody. Mm. We haven't arrested anybody, but uh, we have uh, identified the key leaders okay. that will go after them uh, at the appropriate time. Now, to join us in our subsequent bulletins on all media general platforms because we'll be updating a lot more on this developing story. But to other ones now, calls have intensified for African governments to invest more into adopting sustainable and strategic measures on climate change in the sub region. The ECOWAS Commission has challenged African governments to invest more in adopting sustainable and strategic measures on climate change in the sub region for agriculture, environment, and resources. His Excellency Seko Sangari believes until member countries synergize gains made in the climate agenda, the challenge will persist. He was speaking at a third West African Ministerial Council meeting organized by the West African Science Service Center on Climate Change and Adapted Land Use, Waskal, in Accra. Climate change is one of the fundamental threats to global development and to the chances of ending poverty. The risk it causes to Africa's development calls for sustained responsive action and adequate financing to carry out interventions. On the steps Ghana is taking to deal with climate change, the Deputy Minister of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, Patricia Piede, said while it is essential to partner sister countries in the fight, little changes in individual countries can contribute significantly to the collective efforts. What is being done uh, as a region, if I talk about, about the region, I'm talking about the West Africa region, is to ensure that we have facilities that can build capacities, that can research into uh, the right technologies to be deployed for, to address climate issues, and also to seek for the right funding, pool funding together, to address these issues. The ECOWAS Commissioner for Agriculture, Environment and Resources in his speech read on his behalf, encouraged member countries to synergize gains in the climate change agenda to remain competitive. This meeting provides an opportunity to commend the 10 founding member states for their foresight and leadership. And most importantly, the Federal Republic of Germany the main driving force behind the establishment of this young institution was called. The West African Science of its Center on Climate Change and Adapted Land Use, WASCAL, held a third West African Ministerial Council meeting in Ghana since its inception in 2010. The essence of this year's meeting was to showcase strategies by policymakers at ensuring a sustainable fight against the climate change challenge in the sub region. 
Now, away from climate change, let's talk some law because private legal practitioner Kwame Pokubwa has called on Ghanaians not to throw away their traditional values in the name of foreign cultures. He was speaking at a social democracy program in Accra. Making reference to the 2016 general election, Kwame Opokubwa was at a loss over the sudden silence from the peace breaches soon after the elections. For those of us who followed the 2016 electionary campaign would attest to the fact that many organizations, both local and international, encouraged Ghanaians to embrace a conflict-free election. Now that the election is over, we hardly see or hear people preaching about peace. Within this period, we have allowed the devil to take control and is using our airwaves irresponsibly. The private legal practitioner welcomed the Watch Your Tank initiative by Sergeant Daniel Kwesio Foyapia. The official launching of this program could not have come at a better time at this moment. A time when our airwaves and television stations are saturated with messages, commentaries, and actions on characteristics of a Ghanaian. The peace we enjoy today, of which we pride ourselves, is not by chance, but it has its roots in our culture as a people with a common destiny. It is sad to say that today we have abandoned some of our good values, such as the courtesies that we extend to our neighbors. Kwame Opokubwa linked the growing moral breakdown to the influence of foreign cultures. We are blindly copying the Western world. And we think that you can just stand before your father and say, stupid, and it's all right. Because you saw a white man or a small boy telling the father, you are stupid, and that was okay with the father. But we have our own values as Ghanaians and Africans. And we've got to go back to our values if we want to sustain the peace that we have. We must all be circumspect in the choice of our words, in our speech, what we write, and what we do as citizens of this country. He tags the media to ensure it performs its role as the fourth estate of the realm. As communicators, what comes to your mind before you disseminate information? Is the information meant to correct a wrong or to destroy or to castigate your friend or to render him useless? If we are privileged to have access to the airwaves, we have to use it responsibly. And we can only do this when we think right, when we speak right, and when we act right. We should endeavor to tame our tongue, even though it is difficult. Founder and initiator of Watch Your Tongue campaign, Sergeant Daniel Kwesio Foriapia assured the campaign would be sustained to ensure a change in attitudes. Our focus is not only on elections, but our daily activities. We will all be educating the populace on the need to write right, act right, and speak pleasant words in our homes, in the communities, in churches, in schools, during political activities, in business and training, so that together we will have a safe world. And now Ghana has moved up from grade D in 2016 to A in the macro fiscal forecasting of the public financial management system implementation at the launch of the 2018 public expenditure and financial accountability report. Dr. Mohamed Sani Abdullahi noted the public expenditure and financial accountability assessment report provides the opportunity to identify gaps and close them. The Public Expenditure and Financial Accountability PIFA framework is intended to provide an integrated and harmonized approach for measuring and monitoring public financial management PFM performance progress. It also helps focus support on country-led PFM reform programs. At the launch of the Public Expenditure and Financial Accountability Performance Assessment Report, Chairperson of Public Services Commission, Dr. Janet Ampedufofi, said the public financial management is one of the fundamentals for the development of the country. It is my fervent hope that we use the report as a working document to achieve the targets set out in the country's PFM reform agenda, 
we should also use this as a learning opportunity to equip ourselves with additional knowledge to better understand and achieve our set fiscal targets. The Director General of the National Development Planning Commission, NDPC, Dr. Grace Ifuabediakun, observed the government has prioritized the country's public financial management strategy. The implementation of the international public sector accounting standards to enhance the reporting of public finances and the deepening of implementation of the human resource management information system so as to enhance the management of our wage bill. Deputy Head of Mission and Head of Corporation at the Embassy of Switzerland, Matthias Feldman, noted the public financial management system is critical in the Ghana Beyond Aid agenda. It helps to shed light on the changes that have taken place in Ghana's PFM system over the past couple of years, both the positive ones and maybe also some negative ones. And it helps to identify the remaining gaps and weaknesses and those areas that need further improvements. Dr. Muhammad Abdullahi is the project director of Public Financial Management Reform Project. He outlined the three outcomes of the project. How is external audit doing? And again, how are we managing our revenues, our expenditures, our debts, our assets, our procurement, our internal audit? For macro fiscal and the way we do our fiscal forecasting and strategy, Ghana has moved from a D in 2006 to a B. So good ratings there for the country. We hope that the necessary steps are put in place so that we ensure that rating. You're still watching News at 10 on TV3. We're back with more stories after this break. Don't go away. Welcome back. This is News at 10 on TV3 and also live on DSTV Channel 279. Residents of the Promised Land, a suburb of Ashaiman, are up in arms against the Presbyterian Church in the area and the hotel owner for closing the only alternative access route to the community, a report by Joseph Armstrong. This is the only access route for residents of Promised Land in Ashaiman municipality. The residents have accused the two entities of depriving them of their basic right to access their properties and homes. The residents said they have been negotiating with the church to release about 20 feet at the edge of their property to be used as an alternative access route. They claimed the church neglected their consents and rather erected a gate in the said area. There is no other road except this one. People are coming from other communities. Everybody uses this one with cattle, sheep and whatever. We are pleading with the assemblyman, MC, DC, whichever authority should come to our aid and help us open the other gate so that there will be easy access to the community. Pregnant women are supposed to be going round and round and round before going to the hospital. Where children are sick, there is no alternative way to take them to the hospital. In times of emergency, there is no access road for either police, um, fire service or even ambulance to come into our community. We've been putting in a cage. We don't have true access way. In case of any fire outbreak, the fire tender has only one access, has to go around other Berman Quine or has to go through Tema International outside Afarwa before we can get to our community. Daniel Aqua is the director of the National Disaster Management Organization in Ashaima. No access. So in case of accidents, in case of uh, fire outbreak, uh, when there's a situation that people need to rush somebody to the hospital, no, no, very, no way, or there's, there's not going to be any, uh, the root network is, going to, is very bad and it's going to affect the people. He promised he would channel the grievances of the residents to the municipal chief executive for redress. It becomes very critical, I have to write to region through national for them to come and assess the situation and don't make sure they will force the people to break that particular structure. The MC and the engineer at the municipal assembly says they are doing everything possible to provide the residents with access roads. Joseph Armstrong, TV3 News. 
So how about if we go around the world with some news making the headlines? Now, the international rap. The Norwegian police say a shooting at a mosque in Norway is being investigated as a possible act of terrorism. A gunman opened fire at the Al Noor Islamic Center on the outskirts of the capital Oslo on Saturday. One person in the mosque managed to overpower the gunman and was injured in the process. The suspect was arrested after the attack. The police also charged the suspect with murder after his 17-year-old stepsister was found dead in a separate location. The Saudi-led coalition intervened in Aden on Sunday in support of the Yemeni government after southern separatists effectively took over the port city, fracturing the alliance that had been focused on battling the Iran-aligned Houthi movement. The Sunni Muslim coalition said it attacked an area that posed a direct threat to the Saudi-backed government of al Rabu Mansour Hadi, which is temporarily based in Aden. The attack targeted separatist forces surrounding the nearly empty presidential palace in the Krata district. The alliance had threatened military action if the separatists did not quit government military camps they seized in the city on Saturday, after four days of clashes that killed at least nine civilians and halted fighting. <laughs> Monsoon flooding in southern and western India has led to more than 140 deaths, state officials say, with hundreds of thousands of people evacuated from their homes. Nearly half the reported deaths occurred in the southwestern state of Kerala. The situation is said to be dangerous now, with the bad weather predicted to continue in the days ahead. So let's come back to Ghana and let me tell you about something exciting and interesting because the 2019 edition of Media Generals Ghana's Most Beautiful has been launched in the Ashanti regional capital of Kumasi. The most watched reality pageant show in the country will see 16 contestants competing for the coveted crown for 2019. <laughs> Cultures from across Ghana fused in Kumase as the season 13 of TV3's flagship reality show, Ghana's Most Beautiful, was launched. In a culturally characterized environment, the ladies were outdoored to the public in a grand style, taking turns to be introduced, each contestant flanked by a cultural troupe in traditional dances, mounted the stage to pay homage to traditional leaders and other dignitaries present. <laughs> The traditionally endowed pageant has over the years brought into view the significance and the need to celebrate the rich Ghanaian cultural heritage and tradition. Sixteen contestants were outdoored to symbolize the official kickstart of the 2019 show. Contestants will spend the next 13 weeks doing research and educating Ghanaians on the customs and traditions of their regions and Ghana at large. GMB 2019, black and proud. My two gentlemen and the lady, they are doing the Agbaja dance. So the show is officially launched and it will be showing every Sunday. Get ready to support your contestants and get ready for the voting patterns. Don't miss it on every Sunday. That's how we end tonight's edition of News at 10. My name is Grace Hamwa Asari. Many thanks for joining us. Tomorrow is a holiday, so enjoy the holiday.